editorial board, the president's response to Charlottesville now demands action and demands it right now. They write this in part in the editorial. This is a moment of reckoning for members of the party of Lincoln. Do they want to stand up for American values or do they want to keep enabling a president whose understanding of right and wrong has slipped dangerously off the rails? Let me bring in right now Democratic Congressman Denny Heck for more on this conversation. Congressman, I appreciate you coming in. Do you agree you, with you? Of course. Do you agree with USA Today that the president should face censure now over his response to Charlottesville? Wholeheartedly. Actually, I have a counterintuitive view of this, which is that I believe that if Congress were to take up and enact the censure resolution, which I will support, it actually would have uh, a healing effect on all of this. It would enable us to hit the reset button and start over. Uh, with respect to this conversation and with respect to the ability of Congress actually to assert its co-equal branch responsibility for checks and balances. I think it would enable Congress to be more effective, not just vis-a-vis -vis the administration, but with respect to getting things done that the American people want, like growing this economy faster and creating better jobs and higher paying jobs. But Congressman, what do you do about it? I mean, Democrats, of course, in the minority, I, I don't need to remind you that, of course. Um, have you seen any sign that Republicans... Thanks, Kate. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, Congressman. Um, uh, have you seen any signs that Republicans are leaning that way? Do you see a tipping of the scales? So one of the things that I've actually taken some heart in over the last 48 to 72 hours is the number of Republicans who have spoken up forcefully and clearly and cogently. Uh, I think I'm not going to dignify the words of the president. I think they're beneath the dignity of the Oval Office. But I, I respect greatly some of the things that have been said by Senator Hatch and Senator Rubio and Senator Graham. They have been very clear and strong statements about American values, and I laud them for that. So we have received, you talk about lawmakers who've spoken out, we all have received a, a statement from the Bushes on this, uh, responding to the violence. They don't name the president by name, but, you know, they're speaking out. But we've only seen tweets from President Obama in response to this, and they don't directly address the president's comments. Do you want to hear him speak out? Do you think he should? I think President Obama's entire life and career of public service is testament to the kinds of values that we're talking about here today. Uh, I don't think anybody should doubt where his heart is or where his commitment has been any more than, as you indicated earlier in the broadcast, that of Secretary Clinton, or for goodness sakes, uh, John Lewis, who is my friend with whom I serve, and who right. literally bears the scars of his advocacy on behalf of civil rights. But if Republicans deserve criticism for not speaking out in the face of this, what about President Obama? So is, is there any doubt about President Obama's commitment in this regard? The question, it seems to me, is will he advance this debate or will he become a distraction and enable President mm -hmm. Trump to now create a new target if he were to speak out? President Trump has made a living off of changing the subject, what I call the 3D movie, deception, deflection, and distraction. Uh, that, that is his stock and trade. You know, he wants this now to be about statues and monuments, Kate. And the last time I checked, the Republican Party was f frankly in favor of local control, and every one of these statutes being taken down is being done so by a local elected official. In fact, the president's own ambassador to the UN, Nikki Haley, was the one that took the Confederate flag down in her state. Uh, and th the truth is, that's a distraction, right? Because the white supremacists and the anti-Semites who marched in Charlottesville were carrying signs of white racism and anti-Semitism, even though the president has now spun this to be about statute and monuments. That's not why they were there. Nobody doubts that. That's not what they are about. And that's what we have to stay focused on, what it is they are advocating for and why it is so antithetical to the fundamental values of this country. Uh, Congressman, I know this is quite a turn, but I do want to ask you, since it is some breaking news that has been coming in and you sit on the House Intelligence Committee, um, we have these reports that a van has plowed into a crowd of people um, in a very popular tourist area, Las Ramblas in Barcelona. Um, there are some reports you're seeing there that um, that has gone even further than that. They're reporting that there is some local reporting that two armed men have entered a restaurant in Barcelona after the van crash. 
This is all clearly coming in at minute by minute. Can you, are you, have you, are, are you asking for a briefing on this? Is there anything you, you can offer? Well, I first found out about it about three minutes ago, Kate. Yeah, no, I hear you. But I let me say this. As a member of the House Intelligence Committee, I'm painfully aware that there are people all over this world who get up every day whose sole thought is how they can do harm to the United States of America. Uh, this is yet another painful reminder that we must be ever vigilant. We must allocate the resources and strategically expend them in an effort to keep ourselves safe. And if there's anything that this prompts me to observe, it would be how grateful we should all be that our counterterrorism efforts in this country and the efforts, the valiant efforts of our first responders have kept us safe. Uh, I have often observed that uh, not having replicated anything on the scale of 9-11 since mm -hmm is a miracle, but it isn't a miracle. It really is the result of the efforts on the part of the people I referred to earlier, and we should all be grateful for that. And put their lives on the line every day for us. Uh, Congressman, I appreciate the time. Thank you very much. I've got to move on to this breaking news, though. We're going to head back over overseas to get an update. Thank you so much, Congressman. I want to get back over to Issa Suarez. She's been following all this.